There's a good chance that when you hear the name Honda and the phrase bestseller in one sentence, your mind will leap to the perennially popular Accord and Civic. But in 2016, it was actually the Honda CRV that led its segment, beating out Toyota. You'll understand then why it's so important that Honda get its new CRV, the 2017 model you see right next to me, exactly right. Has the company got a new sales champ on its hands? How does it look? CRV has been brought in line with the stylistic direction kicked off with the new Civic. That means funky shaping on the body and those flattened wheel arches, with swept back headlamps and a sleeker, chrome decorated nose. In back, though the shape of the lighting elements has changed, they retain their vertical orientation. On the road, you should still be able to pick it out as a CRV from the rear view. How's the storage? Now, one of the reasons why you'd buy any compact crossover is because they all have quite a lot of storage in the back. The Honda CRV has more than most, at nearly 76 cubic feet, which beats the RAV4. It's also more than enough space to fit multiple sets of our luggage from away. Honda has done its typical bang-up job of giving you room for all your stuff in this interior. There are a couple of big, non-slip trays for holding your phone or keys, and a trick configurable center storage area with room for just about anything else. Is it roomy? The front seats are typically spacious, with lots of head, leg, and shoulder room to spare for people of above average size. It's worth noting that the hip point is well designed to make getting in and out of the seats as easy as possible for most people. In the back, even adults should find comfortable seating positions, provided there are just two of them. Kids should be cozy for hours back here. How does the interior feel? That's a really good door shut. So the difference between what I'm seeing here and what I'd expect to see in like an Acura product is tiny. This is the Touring Trim CRV, and it doesn't lack for leather or other amenities. I actually really like this trim. It's more of a techie homage to wood than it is an attempt to fake the real thing. Is it well equipped? The top trim CRV Touring has as long an equipment list as I do a list of college era regrets, which is to say that it's long. Outside, you'll find LED headlights and taillights, 18-inch alloy wheels, a hands-free powered tailgate, and remote engine start for those cold winter mornings. Or hot summer afternoons, I guess. There's plenty of good stuff on the inside, too, including dual climate control and heated seats. There's also good safety equipment like lane keep assist and radar cruise control. How's the infotainment system? There's a volume knob! Seriously, I've been complaining about Honda's touch-based volume sliders since its infernal inception. So sitting in the cabin for the first time and finding an actual rotary knob felt almost like a relief. As for the rest of the system, I find it pretty easy to use and navigate, with middle-of-the-class graphics, speed, and feature set. Pairing my phone was quick, and Apple and Android integration is, as always, appreciated. Is it a good daily driver? One thing I noticed immediately when driving the CRV, especially on the highway, is that it's really quiet. The ride itself is really composed, the suspension doesn't make a lot of noise, and the wind noise at speed is pretty low. So a secondary part of the quietness is that there really is like a great sense of strong build quality here too. So even on these roads where there are a lot of bumps and cracks, I'm not hearing any noises from the dashboard or anywhere else that would indicate that the car is poorly screwed together. Is it fun to drive? You know, you get the sense, as you do with a lot of Honda products, that if I were to actually take the CRV out on a back road, that the suspension could keep up if I drove it pretty hard. That being said, it doesn't do anything to encourage that behavior. It's amazing that the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine does make 190 horsepower, and it's more than enough to make the car feel capable. It's certainly not enthusiastic, and hooked up to a CVT transmission, again, sort of painless, not all that much fun. How's the fuel economy? Fuel economy ratings are really excellent, as you'd expect from a new Honda product with a small turbo engine. 
EPA ratings are 27 city, 33 highway, and 29 combined. And when I drove the car sensibly, I was hitting those numbers. How much is it? Prices range from the mid-20s to the mid-30s, and in general, the CRV is priced near the high middle of the segment when you allow for comparable specs. It will be less frequently discounted than much of the competition, but with higher residual values. What are the negatives? Right now, the Honda CRV offers a very complete package in the segment, but in the not so distant future, the Mazda CX-5 should offer a little bit more fun and a strong cross shop. Meanwhile, the Kia Sportage can be had with more power for similar money. Who should buy it? I can't think of a credible reason why this Honda shouldn't lead the compact CUV class again. Great fuel economy, ride comfort, and Honda's larger reputation for reliability make this a must-test drive for everybody from young families to empty nesters. If you guys liked our Why Buy video, you can click the like button right there. You can leave us a comment or you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, look for us on Facebook and on Twitter and on MotorOne.com.